Hey, hey there, team. We got a lot to get through, so let's make this quick. There are time codes below if you want to get to a specific part in the video, or if you just don't want to watch it all at once and you want to watch it a bit at a time. Anyway, we're going to be covering one of the most praised expansions to date, one that brought back some favorite heroes, some old villains, and a few legendary weapons. Before we get started, let's just embrace the YouTuber in me and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe and all that usual shenanigans. It really helps out. Anyway, there's a lot we gotta get through, so gather your artifacts, rally your order halls, and prepare to push back against the onslaught of demons that await us in World of Warcraft's sixth expansion, Legion. World souls are the spiritual essence of a world, and the first to manifest was Amun Thul. Amun Thul was a titan, the first of the titans, and he ventured out into the cosmos, awakening other world souls, which would also form into other titans, eventually leading to the creation of the titan pantheon. The Pantheon went about shaping worlds and establishing order throughout the known universe. However, Demons began to show up in their galaxy, and the Titan Sargeras began to fight off the demons spawning from the Twisting Nether. So in the beginning, there was light, but from the light grew a newer essence, one of shadow, and this was called the Void. And the light and the Void clashed, creating the physical universe of the Warcraft series, as well as a magical plane of existence in between the two, called the Twisting Nether. And while the Pantheon were servants of the light, they had to constantly deal with the flood of demons pouring from the Twisting Nether. Sargeras waged a war against the demons, fighting alongside his companion, Agrimar. The two titans created the prison world Mardum, where they sent all the demons they defeated. The war between Sargeras and the demons slowly dwindled as more and more demons were sent to Mardum. Eventually, the duo of Agrimar and Sargeras would split up in order to protect more of the universe at the same time. While traveling the cosmos on his own, Sargeras encountered a planet that had been completely infected with beings of the Void we now know as Old Gods. It turns out that the Old Gods were created and sent by the Lords of the Void, the Void Lords, and their job was to find a planet with a dormant world soul corrupt the planet and its world soul, and that would create a Dark Titan. And a Dark Titan would be a being so powerful that not even the Pantheon could stand against it. When Sargeras found out about the Void Lords and their plan to create a Dark Titan, he got pretty pissed, and so he took his giant sword and literally cleaved the entire infected planet in half, destroying the world and killing the dormant world soul housed inside of it. So Sargeras then goes and meets up with the Pantheon and tells them what happened, and they are not happy that he killed a dormant world soul instead of attempting to save it. Sargeras insisted that the Void Lord's corruption over a planet would lead to the end of all things, and so his solution was to just eliminate all the things that could be corrupted. Because even a universe without life would be better than a universe controlled by the Void. The other titans disagreed, and so Sargeras left the Pantheon and ventured off into the distant cosmos on his own. While on his own, Sargeras decided to take action into his own hands, or rather, purge the entire universe of all life, and to do that, he would need an army. Thus the titan went and headed to the prison world he created, Mardum, where he released the imprisoned demons there and created the Burning Legion. With his new army, Sargeras sent the Legion to invade their first planet. Agrimar caught wind of what Sargeras had done and rushed off to the now ravaged world and demanded Sargeras explain his actions. But the two former allies would come to blows, and both ended up shattering their swords in an explosion of fell and arcane magic. 
terribly injured Agrimar raced back to the Pantheon. The Pantheon of Titans confronted Sargeras and tried to reason with him, but in the end, the Lord of the Burning Legion slew each and every member of the Pantheon. In his final breath, the Titan Norganon had managed to cast a spell which spared the souls of his fellow Titans and sent them falling away into the great dark of the cosmos. While the Burning Legion set off on their warpath to extinguish all life in the cosmos, there was a planet in their way, one that was brimming with powerful spellcasters. The planet Argus was home to the wise Eridar, and the Eridar were led by the Triumvirate, a wise and powerful trio of Eridar. The members of the Triumvirate were Kil'jaeden, Archimond, and Velen. Over the years, the powerful magic usage by the Eridar had drawn the attention of Sargeras. The fallen titan offered the Triumvirate a deal. If the Eridar swore allegiance to the Burning Legion, they would receive untold power beyond their imagining. Kil'jaeden and Archimond agreed to the deal immediately and bound their people into the service of Sargeras. Velen, however, resisted the temptation offered, and he and all those that did not wish to serve the Legion were contacted by beings of light known as the Naru. The Naru sent ships to rescue Velen and his followers as they escaped Argus just as the Burning Legion descended on the planet. Velen and his followers were renamed the Draenei, and they would spend the next tens of thousands of years running away from the Burning Legion. Y'all should probably know what happens after that, right? The Draenei crash into Draenor, then the Burning Legion corrupted the orcs, then the Draenei fled from Draenor and crashed into Azeroth, then all of World of Warcraft happens, then the Burning Crusade happens, then Wrath, then Gata, then Vindaria, and then, yeah, you know. Which brings us up to today, where the Black Dragon Rathion helped Garrosh Hellscream time travel into a past reality before the orcs of Draenor were corrupted. A group of Horden Alliance heroes, led by the wizard Khadgar, traveled after Garrosh and stopped the interdimensional war of the Iron Horde. But they also stopped the Burning Legion from launching an assault from that time dimension as well. However, the heroes failed to kill the orc warlock Gul'dan, and he managed to escape from his world and time period and travel back to Azeroth in our current day World of Warcraft. And it is in this timeline, the Prime Timeline, where the Servant of the Burning Legion now resides, and he has a mission to accomplish. The Warlock, Gul'dan, had managed to escape the alternate Draenor, but now he faced a new challenge. His demon master killed Jaden had reached out to the orc and demanded he set sail to the Broken Isles. Unfortunately, Gul'dan's trip wouldn't be easy, because the Archmage Khadgar had found the Warlock and chased him all the way to their destination. On the Broken Isles, Gul'dan had managed to give Khadgar the slip, but the Mage entrusted the help of Maiev Shadowsong, leader of the Watchers, and the two began to search the nearby islands for Gul'dan. The Warlock had slipped past the Watchers and made his way to the Broken Shore, a nearby island which housed the ancient ruins of the Temple of Elun, a sacred temple which had been a significant Night Elf structure prior to the War of the Ancients. However, the temple had become the tomb of a number of different beings, the two most notable ones being the Avatar of Sargeras, a powerful demon slain by the Guardian Aegwyn, and the Gul'dan of the Prime Timeline, who had raised the Isles from the depths below and had been slain by the demons inside the temple. Though it was no longer known as the Temple of Elune, but instead called the Tomb of Sargeras. Kil'jaeden had instructed Gul'dan on how to open the tomb, and when the orc got inside, he had to unlock the seals inside the temple in order to open up a powerful portal which would grant the demons of the Burning Legion entrance into Azeroth. Khadgar and Maiev had shown up in time to halt Gul'dan, but Kil'jaeden infused the Warlock with the Eridar's power, and with that aid, the Warlock was able to beat back the Archmage and the Warden. After which, Gul'dan succeeded in dispelling the last of the seals inside the tomb, and a massive demon portal began to open. Khadgar and Maiev fled the tomb just as the armies of the Burning Legion began to invade the planet. The third and final demon invasion had begun. 
Cadgar quickly flew to Stormwind, where he told Varian Wren about the demon's invasion, and with that, Varian called the Alliance and the Horde into action. A united force of the armies of Azeroth, the Alliance, the Horde, the Argent Crusade, and the Earthen Ring all set off to stop Gul'dan at the Broken Shore. As the forces of Azeroth landed on the now demon-covered island that was the Broken Shore, they were met with heavy resistance. Champions of the Horde and Alliance, including King Varian Wren, Warchief Vol'jin, Jaina Proudmoore, Thrall, and Sylvanas Windrunner began to blaze through the demon forces of the Burning Legion. But for every one demon killed, two more would be summoned into the world. Tyrion Forgering, High Lord of the Argent Crusade, had led the initial vanguard to clear a way into the tomb. But those knights were eventually overrun, and by the time the Alliance and Horde caught up with them, most were already dead or dying, with Tyrion himself being defeated and held captive by Gul'dan. Waiting for his audience to finally arrive, Gul'dan summoned the Doomlord giant Crossus, who incinerated the High Lord in front of the remaining forces of Azeroth. The Horde and Alliance press on through the Isle where they split up. Varen and the Alliance were to engage Gul'dan and his remaining forces at the tomb's gates, while Vol'jin and the Horde were to secure the ridge looking over the tomb of Sargeras, clearing the area of aerial attacks as well as preventing demon reinforcements from aiding Gul'dan. Unfortunately, it was all a trap. Gul'dan had been hiding just how powerful the portal had begun, and a massive fleet and army of demons appeared surrounding the tomb. As the Alliance pushed ever closer to the Warlock, the forces of demons closed ever more around the Horde. Several Horde warriors had been killed, and many more were injured, including the Warchief Vol'jin. With her warchief dying in her arms and the unending demon army killing more horde with each passing second, Sylvanas called for a retreat and fled the broken shore with the few survivors that remained, leaving the Alliance to their own fate. The Alliance couldn't see the endless waves of demons that had broken the Horde's defenses, nor did they truly know how futile their current assault really was. But they did hear the Horde's call to retreat, which they took as a betrayal. Without the Horde's aid, the Alliance tried to fall back, but by then it was too late. Their escape gunship was halted by a massive Fell Reaver, preventing them from leaving the Broken Shore. It was up to Varian Wren to sacrifice himself to kill the Demon Machine and let the remaining Alliance forces escape. And as the gunship flew off, Varian alone marched forward against the waves of demons and one last attempt to kill Gul'dan and stop the portal. In the end, the King of Stormwind was impaled by the demons around him and brought to his knees in front of the Legion's warlock. You will be remembered as the king who sacrificed his life for nothing. For the Alliance. Back during the Burning Crusade, Illidan Stormrage, Lord of Outland, had been recruiting an army of Night Elf and Blood Elf soldiers and training them to become demon hunters just like him. These Illidari would be infused with demon powers just like Illidan was, becoming more demonic in order to better fight the demons. The Illidari had been sent out on missions against the Burning Legion, with their final one being on the eve of the Battle of the Black Temple. The demon hunters had been sent out to the shattered world of Mardoom, where they were to locate and retrieve the Sargerite Keystone, a skeleton key of sorts, one that would allow portals to be opened to any world, including Argus, which had become the heart of the Burning Legion. After the Illidari had successfully retrieved the Sargerite Keystone, they used it to return to the Black Temple, right as Illidan was defeated by Maya's Shadowsong and the Champions of Shatrath. 
The Warden and her Watchers then captured and imprisoned the Illidari, taking them, along with the corpse of their leader, to the Vault of the Wardens, a prison located on the Broken Isles. So let's just pause and clear some stuff up real quick. Because Blizzard likes making their retcons as convoluted as possible, Illidan did, in fact, die at the Black Temple at the end of the Burn and Crusade. However, because Illidan is some sort of demon, his soul wasn't destroyed since demons can't technically die outside of the Twisting Nether. Instead, their bodies regenerate in the Twisting Nether and then they respawn in a way. So what Maiev and the Watchers did to prevent Illidan from respawning in the Twisting Nether is they trapped the demon hunter's soul in his corpse and then imprisoned his corpse in the Vault of the Wardens. Just to recap, Illidan is dead, his soul is trapped in his corpse, and his corpse is trapped in the Vault of the Wardens. I know it's convoluted, but don't get mad at me. I didn't write the lore, just the script. Now, in modern times, after the forces of Azeroth failed to stop Gul'dan at the Broken Shore, the fell-corrupted warden, Cordana Fellsong, led Gul'dan and an army of demons to the Vault of the Wardens. The Burning Legion planned to use the corpse of Illidan, who was a powerful demon in his own right, to be a vessel of Sargeras and allow their lord to enter the world of Azeroth. So Gul'dan, Cordana, and a sea of demons plunge into the Vault of the Wardens. Maiev and her watchers try to defend the vault, but the demon numbers are too vast. So the Warden woke up the captured Illidari and recruited them to fight back against the invading Legion forces. While the demon hunters and wardens began to escape the prison, which was now overflowing with demons, Maiev confronts Cordana and Gul'dan. But it's too late. The two were already able to retrieve Illidan's corpse, and they managed to escape with it before Maiev could stop them. After the surviving Illidari and Watchers made it out of the vault, Archmage Khadgar arrived to recruit the two factions into allying with the races of the world in order to defeat the Burning Legion once and for all. Speaking of Khadgar, after the events of the Broken Shore, the Dalaran Council of Six decided to unite with the forces of Azeroth, both the Alliance and the Horde. Jaina Proudmoore, the leader of Dalaran's council, disagreed with that decision, since she believed the Horde responsible for the failure at the Tomb of Sargeras, and she had a bunch of other problems with them too. However, Jaina was outvoted by the rest of the council, and in response, she decided to leave the Council of Six and the Kirin Tor altogether. The Kirin Tor then received a visitor from former king and former statue Magni Bronzebeard, who's now walking and talking around. Magni told Cadgarth the planet of Azeroth was a sleeping titan, and that the Burning Legion intended on slaying it before the old gods could corrupt it. He then told the wizard that the only way to stop the invasion was to seal up the demon portal located inside the tomb of Sargeras, and to do that, they'd need to find the Pillars of Creation, powerful artifacts that have been scattered across the Broken Isles. Magni left the fate of Azeroth in the hands of Khadgar while the stonified dwarf attempted to communicate with the world soul of the planet. Khadgar, now leader of the Kirin Tor, teleported the whole city of Dalaran to the Broken Isles in order to have it act as a forward base of operations for the forces of Azeroth. Khadgar led the overall united assault against the Burning Legion, as well as searching the islands around the Tomb of Sardaris for the Pillars of Creation. Okay, so to recap, the united forces of Azeroth, which include, but are not limited to, the Alliance, the Horde, the Kirin Tor, and the Wardens, have all gathered on the Broken Isles in order to stop the demon invasion. And, the way they're going to stop them is by finding the Pillars of Creation, which were once used to seal a powerful demon portal located in the Tomb of Sargeras. So, they need to find the Pillars of Creation, push the demon forces back far enough so they can use the Pillars of Creation, and do all of that before Gul'dan is able to summon Sargeras into Azeroth by using Illidan's corpse as a vessel. But while Khadgar and the Azerothian forces deal with finding the Pillars of Creation, the Horde and Alliance leaderships have to reorganize. 
Hey there team, thank you so much for watching. This is just part one of a multi-part series that's going to be covering all of World of Warcraft's Legion expansion. Once the final individual part is uploaded, I will then release the full one hour and 20-ish minute version of the Legion video. Kinda like a, <laughs> kinda like a Snyder cut. I don't know, so you can pick which one you want to watch, watch them in multiple parts sooner, or watch them later on in the one big video. Up to you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a good one, and I'll see you in part two.